Okay, hi. See, like I said, fails. All right. Hi, uh, my name is Rudraksh. Uh, I gave this talk last year at uh, the Southern JavaScript conference. Uh, essentially, back in those days, I used to do uh, a lot of scientific computing, uh, doing some defense work with the army, or doing a couple of other little projects with other people. And this was basically about figuring out how you could use a language like JavaScript for something as you know uh, compute heavy as scientific computing and the the end you know what we realized was that it's not really such a bad idea after all sure there are some caveats there are some quirks and there are some major problems but at the end of the day it does work out so i'm just going to quickly run you through what we did um, you know when when you, when you when you say scientific computing what really comes to mind it's stuff like astrophysics biostatistics cheminformatics and you know it just doesn't stop there so you also have some things that are more closer to us than we realize, like computational finance, uh, the stock market. Uh, there are some great companies in the US that actually use scientific computing to make better money off the stock market. And currently, languages that are used heavily in this regard are Python, R, there's Julia as well that's upcoming. Uh, some of you may have attended Shashi's talk yesterday. So that's coming up really well. Now, the thing is that why JavaScript? I mean, what's, what's wrong with Python and R? So theoretically, there's nothing really wrong with them. They're great languages, and people have been using them for a while. R has been around for at least 20 years now, Python for about six or seven. But the thing is, from what I realize, is that they don't have the same advantages that JavaScript does. And these are, those are async, and that it runs everywhere. So Python, for instance, does have asynchronous extensions. There's Tornado that allows asynchronous computing, but it's not something that Guido von Rossum really thought about when he was designing the language. And JavaScript, unlike other languages, runs everywhere. I mean, it runs on cameras, it runs on drones, it runs on the server, it runs inside a browser. Inside the browser, it runs in different contexts. It runs everywhere, unlike Python or R. So the thing is that I, I, you know, it feels like JavaScript's the phone gap for scientific computing. Now, a lot of us hate phone gap. A lot of uh, us really think that phone gap didn't work. But what a lot of us don't realize is that phone gap changed the way people thought about mobile development. I mean, you just know HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And now, lo and behold, suddenly you can write mobile apps. You don't need to learn Objective-C. If you don't know Java, that's cool. You just need to know JavaScript. In the same way, JavaScript has that, kind, that thing going for it. It can change the way scientific computing is done today. Uh, it gives us a powerful experience.